the title of this is Winter Solstice, and um, I wanted to, it's a snow picture, but at the same time I wanted to create a, a feeling of uh, warm quality to the painting, so that um, I chose to use this combination of a cool red and a, and a warm orange type of color to um, be the dominant uh, feature in the painting. I have been primarily interested in the West as history. And uh, before I came West, I was an illustrator, books and magazines. And um, I did a lot of historical painting at that period for um, Life magazine and the National Geographic and a number of magazines. So coming West over a period of years, the immediate history of the West really intrigued me. It was uh, something that had happened almost within someone's lifetime. This dates back to right at the beginning of the 19th century. And this uh, village was on the upper Missouri River, right where the river turns and goes west near uh, Bismarck, South Dakota. But uh, this tribe was unique in the way that it uh, lived in the, uh, the lodges that they built. And um, they were almost an agricultural tribe. They weren't a war tribe, warrior's tribe, but um, they, uh, they had particular way of, uh, of, of adorning themselves and, and wonderful uh, culture within the tribe, and I became fascinated with them. When you get yourself into this kind of a problem with this large a piece, you have to, um, it almost has to be have a monumental quality, and that was what I was trying to do in the subject matter. If this painting had come out in an 8 by 10 inch painting, you, you know, it wouldn't be nearly as impressive as it is with it, using a large format. So that um, when you get into this large format, you almost have to have something that's going to stand by itself or you you know you might as well forget it. In designing it became concerned with the, the big overall shape of tying the horse and the uh, the figure and the shield and everything into one big unit and then breaking it up into smaller circular type movements within the within the big piece. Starting with this figure with the blowing robe it was almost a, a, a triangle in itself and then uh, it created such a thrust upward that you had to balance it with the cross uh, lines uh, going in the background as secondary lines, but still balancing this tremendous up thrust that you're getting. So it became almost um, fighting within itself because you're creating two different opposites. And then you start, I start trying to introduce circular and curve movements to try and balance out the uh, tremendous vertical and horizontal thrust that you're getting in a painting like this. And um, it gets, it, it, one of the problems with that is that if you get too formally involved with these things, that it, it tends to become a geometric uh, statement rather than something that has hopefully some, um, some charm to it. I started working with the color in terms of trying to get something that would give it warmth, give it uh, a little bit different sense of, of color rather than the usual blue sky, you know, blue river sort of thing. And um, that's why I really settled on this color arrangement. I've always had the feeling that um, putting two colors together uh, creates problems because then the third color is uh, increasingly uh, controversial when it comes in. So that most of the things I do are more or less uh, analogous color. In other words, they're related colors. And, the, and this one, I've come in with the yellows and the reds to a great extent, and they more or less dominate, especially the yellow dominates the, the thing. Creating depth in a painting can be achieved in several ways. It can be achieved by changing values, letting values go lighter as it goes back and also dealing with cooler color as it goes back into the distance. And this one little slice of, of a piece of landscape in the background, low hills of some kind, immediately take the picture back in depth. And also you can also soften linear qualities as you go back and uh, lose edges and things that soften the image as it retreats. This is a small painting that was painted on the spot down in uh, Port of Panasco in Mexico, and uh, I've done a lot of this over the over the years, and it, I find it's very refreshing as far as studio work is concerned to go out and paint on the spot, 
and refresh yourself on light in the way that it it occurs on on a scene or on an object and you you get all of these accidental reflected lights and uh, and uh, nuances that you just can't conceive of in your mind when you're working on a studio piece so that these become a help when you bring them back and you can reflect back on the day that you spent out doing this. Aside from being a heck of a lot of fun, it's also very informative. And um, they usually have a little different character than the studio pieces, whereas they're not, not as studied. They're more something you put down in a couple of hours and, um, and uh, you're also urged on by the fact that your light is changing and the the whole type of atmosphere you're working in may change suddenly so that you have to get something down and said very quickly, which is also a discipline that helps you when you come back to the studio. You exaggerate contrast, you exaggerate color. For example, you're dealing very close to almost white in these areas and yet you're dealing with a warm white here and a cool white here, which helps give the, uh, to me, that's the focal point of this painting, is the, uh, the use of those two different white elements in there. And um, white has so much character in terms of the type of color you can put into it. This, this element here, the worm, has several other types of color thrown in there in terms of changing its character. Little spots of orange which take away from the uh, the cool pink idea. And down in here you're getting into greens and blues and a little bits of warm color within this white. And yet essentially it keeps its character. It's still cool and this is still warm. But they, there are elements thrown in that begin to pull it all together because the, some of the cool elements in here appear up in this area so that you get a continuity of uh, of statement that uh, that holds true throughout the painting. Then, during World War II, I was uh, assigned as a so-called combat artist and was sent to the Pacific on a ship and uh, participated in several operations in the Pacific. And my uh, assignment was to, you know, to do drawings and documentation of of those uh, events as well as life aboard the ship. I was always impressed with the mess hall because the ship was in constant movement so that the table, the tables were attached to poles from floor to ceiling so that they were stable. But when the ship was rocking, the cups and things would go up and down the table and the coffee would be a wash on the table. These drawings were done in the Pacific when I was on the ship uh, out in those, some of those operations. This was, uh, uh, I think, in the in the marshals and this was uh, on board the ship the uh, it was an attack transport the pieces the paintings themselves ended up in the smithsonian collection and a lot of the drawings went to the coast guard academy it was a wonderful introduction to uh, to what i do now because i learned to work with people and to um, uh, think in terms of dramatic sequences and um, the uh, the whole period of that three years was a wonderful experience in terms of, I had just come out of art school, so I was ready to try and do something, try hoping to do something solid. And it was a great training ground because it, uh, you're forced to work under conditions that you were not accustomed to. And I'm forever grateful having had the life in art because it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a way of life. It isn't just a job. It's, it's something that goes on and on. And people say to me now, they say, what, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, to what? <laughs>